What's going on, guys? This is Dirk Detta, and... It's fucking quiet. No, never mind. There we go. Alright. Just gotta look at everything, load it all up, take it all in so I can uh, process those textures. Okay, I don't like the hand controls, so... Okay. Let's go. Ooh, it's a diesel electric. Made by General Motors. Check that shit out. It's kind of retro looking though. Let's let's get a shot of the front. In any Pacific. That's awesome. Oh yeah. That's some good shit right there. Oh look at me, I'm wearing the overalls. <clears throat> I got like a no. I wanna I'm trying to get a, a good look, but that's not. Oh well. That's that's the front of the train. I'm going am I going backwards? Oh no. Oh it's a double sided train. I was like what the f <laughs> I was like what the hell? Okay. Well anyway, let's go back in the cockpit. So yeah, you know, just uh I absolutely love this game, man. It's 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 relaxing. It's great, you know. I, I just sit back and chill. And just uh twenty nine nine or uh Roger Day got me a vector and my victor and the and you sink I don't even know. I, I'm trying to be cute and it's not working. I can't think of anything. It's kinda cool though, right? I'm out in Los Angeles or whatever. Just out in the desert. You know, just uh Move that, huh? A little too fast. Slow it down. Slow her down. Starting to lag. There we go. <clears throat> There's gonna be some hiccups in the lag, cause this game, like, I mean, it, it's 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 a lot of scenery this thing got to process, you know. And I got a pretty good computer, like I got. I got a uh, 6950 that's unlocked with a, uh, you know, um, <clears throat> a Sandy Bridge uh, 2500K. You know, I got a pretty good rig, so this thing's, you know, having trouble with it. Come on. It's quite cool though. Brake pressure. I think I'm going, oh, I'm going downhill, that's right. And I can't go faster than, I'm going to have to really give it some brakes now because I got to slow down to 30. What we're gonna do is we're gonna apply brake pressure as we're going down the hill. There we go. And no, actually, I think we're good. A little bit of throttle here. Oh crap! Come on! Come on! Come on! You can do it. There we go. A little bit of, a little bit of gas. I gotta get the momentum going now. <clears throat> this ain't easy, man. This ain't easy. I'm a little out of practice, so I haven't played in a while. So I'm gonna go ahead and let the uh, let gravity do its work, and I'm just gonna apply a little bit of uh, brake pressure as we're as we're descending, just a little bit, because <clears throat> it's not always about throttling. You know, sometimes you gotta you, know, you have to you have to control you, know, you gotta control everything. You gotta control the brakes and the throttle. That's just kind of the way it is. <clears throat> so it's, it's kind of a pain though because you gotta like you gotta get you gotta find that balance and I'm still kind of rough with it. I'm just giving it too much of everything, you know. So I got the hang of it soon. There we go. See about eleven percent. That's good brake pressure, I think. No, nope, need a little bit more. Thirteen percent. I want to have just enough brake pressure just to keep it in check, just to keep it in control. I'm such a fucking tryhard, man. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I think I'm using the wrong brake. Dynamic brake. Maybe that's the problem. What the hell is that? I know there's a brake you use to keep the... Is this one? The quota brake? That might be it. No, I'm... I'm fucking hauling ass. Ugh. Crap. Turn that 
out. <laughs> it's a pain. It's, it's not easy. Jeez. Come on. Come on, slow down. Slow down. There we go. Alright. What is the right amount of brake you gotta apply just to keep this thing steady? I think I had it earlier. Oops. Too much brake. A little bit of gas. I gas her up a little bit. Alright, I gotta cover six miles and... Oh shit, I'm late. Ooh, I'm late. That's not good. How am I late? I was I was speeding half the way over there. That doesn't make any sense. Like, how am I supposed to make it there when I I, I have to? I can only do thirty on time. It's ridiculous. I swear, sometimes it's sometimes a wonder, you know. That's a horn. That's awesome. Alright, there's my destination. Oh no, I'm supposed to be... Okay, 7.18. Oh, it's 17.06. So I'm good. I, I'm, I, I was about to say, like, how the hell am I late? I was speeding, like, most of the way. I think I got it, though. I'm just kind of... Just kind of maintaining the right amount of speed. This is going to be a tricky, though. I need to stop at Canyon North Track, but I have to stop downhill, so if I screw up, I'm going to I'm gonna end up drifting right by it. <clears throat> so this is going to be kind of tricky. And, uh, you know, I, I had a lot of requests to uh, pick this game back up and, and uh, do a commentary on it, so, you know, I got no problem doing that, you know. Turn my lights off. There we go. Alright. How far am I? I got 5.1 miles to go. That doesn't make any sense. Canyon. No, I have to go via Canyon. Okay. I don't have to stop, I just have to go through there. I think. Yeah, I'm good. Alright. And there's no... No, that, no, there's... No, I'm good. I'm okay. okay. I was wondering. I was like, I don't know why they tell me go via, like... Okay, I'll go right through there. Why do you need to tell me that? It's, it's not really pertinent information. Give it too much break. It's, it's, it's so subtle, like, you know, conducting a train is just so subtle. I mean, I think I'm going to be there at 1717. I'm supposed to be there at 1718. I'm not really too sure. Alright. I think that's enough break. Nine. Nine percent should be enough. This is slow going, guys. I mean, I'm, I'm doing 30. <laughs> Why am I only going 30? There's nothing out here. Uh, if it was up to me, I'd be going full speed. I'd just be flying. But uh, I guess that's just the way it is. But anyway, I guess I'll take this opportunity to just talk a little bit about uh, what's been going on. And if you guys are actually still paying attention, uh, I thank you. Well, thank you for putting up with... Uh, no, no, I shouldn't say that. You know, that that's not right. But uh, you guys want to see me play other games? Like, I play a lot of games. Like, my Steam folders. I, I, have, a, I have like 40, 50 games in my Steam folder alone. I have vintage consoles, but uh, I'm not really ready to do those yet because I want to get a couch in my in my office to play those games. Anything on the PC is fair game, though. If you guys are interested, you know, just leave a comment just saying, yeah, Derek, I'd like to see more games. Why are you only playing Battlefield 3? And the reason why is just, that's just the game I've been into lately. You know, it's just the game I've been wanting to play. Because generally the way it works is like, whenever I get into a game, I just start recording it, put it up on the internet. And uh, that's pretty much it. Like, a lot of times when I'm playing a game, if unless I'm 
playing like Dead Space out in the living room or something, um, I'll just fucking record it. I don't care. It's, it's no big deal. There's there are certain exceptions to that rule, but for the most part, this is kind of how I roll. You know, kind of how like this train's rolling downhill, and I get to go 40 miles an hour. Yay! Good lord, this is slow going. But uh, you know, just you know, leave a comment. You know, just tell me what kind of games like you'd like me to play. Yeah, first person shooters are fine. Um, I got you know, I like single player games too. I you know, I've been it's great that I've actually been getting into the whole live commentary thing because I, I want to, you know, do old school games and stuff like that on on the live stream and I really have like no pressure, you know, where it comes to just talking while I'm playing. It's really not that bad. Like there are times when I'm I'm playing and, and talking and I'm I'm not exactly playing hundred percent because I'm trying to be entertaining while I'm playing and that's kind of hard to do, you know. So it, it's not as easy as it looks. I mean, it's 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 easy enough, but at the same time, you ha I have to concentrate on, you know, thinking of funny things to say or or whatever. Now, most of it's natural, yes, but there's there's times where I do have to fill the void, you know. Like I, I like literally have to think of something like that instead of just thinking it about my head. I have to say it out loud, and I don't know. It, it, does that make any sense? You know, so, because some people do complain, like, why didn't you do this, why didn't you do that? It's like, well, because uh, I'm having a conversation while playing. It's it's not that easy. <laughs> if I was, like, in try-hard mode, I'd just be quiet the whole time, and you wouldn't hear anything out of me, and that would be kind of boring. I'd have to comment, I have to do post-commentary. But that's it for that. I'm just going to leave that alone. Um, I'll say, though, there is a lot of DLC in this game, man. It's, I'm gonna buy some, I just want to wait till it's on sale or whatever, because, oh, God, there's just so much of it, man, and it's, it's not cheap either, like, it costs a pretty penny, you know, which doesn't make any sense. That's enough, I just wanted to give it a little boost, because the, the hill is, actually, I'll just give it less breaks. The hill's gonna give me enough power. And see, I gotta slow down the 35 up ahead. So, I might as well just... Might as well just retain the braking pressure and just keep it keep it moving. Why am I doing a commentary on Train Simulator 2012? Like... <laughs> that's how crazy I am, man. But, you know, everybody's talking about diversity and all this other stuff. And, like, well, people should be pigeonholing, them, pigeonholing themselves in... You know, just on one franchise and one game, you know, and uh, YouTube is all about personalities, and I've actually preached the same thing myself, and I don't know. Um, this is just, you know, I, mainly it's just because a lot of people have requested it, and I've actually been meaning to play this game a little bit more, so I'm actually knocking out two birds with one stone, but I, I keep coming back to that. It's probably because I really can't think of anything else to say at the moment, because, uh, yeah. Because I'm driving a train out in the middle of the frickin' desert. Danger, 600 volts. That's it? 600 volts? Is that a lot? I don't really think it's a lot. Like 6,000 volts, maybe. 60,000 volts, I think, was a lot, but... I don't know, 600? I don't really think that's too bad. It's too much brake pressure. So that's okay though, because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take off the brake, and I'm going to let the train go ahead and speed up to 40 miles an hour during this stretch where I have to go 35. Which happened really quick. Maybe I can cheat. And it'll hit 36 by the time I get 40. No, the turn isn't sharp enough to scrub that much speed off. So let me turn up the brake just a little bit. Keep it going. Oops, too much, too much. Let it go. All right, come on. Gotta make it. Gotta make my next stop at one time. Okay, now we're gonna be able to go 50. Thank God. Jeez. I 
spiel. Oh, where's forties up there? I thought I went through it already. Thing is, if you go too fast for too long, it'll it'll make you stop. So it's kind of a bummer, you know. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and let go. And then, actually, I'm just gonna give it a little bit of brake pressure. Give it some reduction. Okay, I need to. I just need to go through. Canyon track. I thought I pick. A, I thought I had to pick up passengers. I guess not. I, I don't know. It's kind of weird, right? I thought I'd pick up. Pa what is this? Fifty, and then it goes down to forty. Like. This is ridiculous. It's starting to get on my nerves. I don't have any passengers. Wow. The train's empty. It's kind of a waste. I'm just lugging around an empty train. You know, what's up with that? Sounds kind of nice, though. It's just kind of gliding along. <laughs> oh, man. Here we go. We can actually go kind of quick now. 50 miles an hour. And then straight down to 40 again. Morning, Niner, I want Niner. You're going a little too fast there, over. Roger that. I'm about to about to clear the uh, speed limit up ahead and uh, just go ahead and ro rover over a, a, gover, a gopher in October over. I, I thought I'd pick up passengers. Oh, I got there early. Either I got there early, or... Or I'm really supposed to pick up some passengers. I'm trying to slow down. Alright, there we go. Too much slowdown. Now I gotta speed up a little bit. Watch it like, watch the last screen tell me I, I missed like a thousand people and they're all like fucking sitting there like, whoa. The train just like blew by. I couldn't get in, man. <clears throat> well, man, empty. train's empty, bro. It's, it's kind of fucked up, man. Oh, look at that. I can even control the, the, the guy in the, oh, never mind. It doesn't. It doesn't make any difference, because you get the same brake pressure. Okay, what's my speed? 33.8? I need to go faster than that. Let's just take the brake off. Roger that, I see some Smokies up on the... Oh, no, never mind. <laughs> I keep trying to get cute with the, the whole CB talk, and I'm just not good at that. Nope, not enough break. It's just never enough. Never enough. You know, it's never enough. It's like that song from Econoline like, Crush. It's never enough now. Never enough now. Come on, take it all away. You know what I'm talking about? Maybe I'm... I don't know. That was some good music. Zero point... Oh, I was like, is that the speed limit? Zero point nine? Are you kidding me? I can't go that. Alright, I gotta be in the next stop at 17.38. We can do this, man. We can do this. See, you're right there. Like, you're right there in that seat next to me, and you're just, like, chilling there. And I'm just... Like... Yeah, baby. That's so awesome. <laughs> Alright, now we get to go 40 up ahead. So, kind of maintain a 37. Kinda just maintain a 37. It's going to start dipping a little bit extra up ahead, so that should be perfect. Right when we get that extra amount of, uh, extra amount of, um, nope, maybe not. That extra descent, we should be able to speed up just a little bit. No, we're kind of not speeding up a little bit more. Let me apply the brake pressure at 5%. That, that should pick us up a little more speed. God, I'm, I'm such a tryhard. I, I am such a train simulator tryhard. This is just so. <laughs> it's fun though, man. Like, I don't know why. I just I'm sitting here just 
I'm totally captivated by this. Like this is it's it's <laughs> it's a good stretch. Like I bought this on a Steam sale for like like ten bucks. I mean, you know, just ten bucks, man. Like who cares, right? Like. Ten bucks isn't really, you know, a life or death, you know, um, it's not really a tremendous amount of money. And I've gotten my money's worth out of this, you know? Like, that's the thing about video games, you know, like, when, when you, like, people, like, you know, they complain, they buy a game for $60, right? They play it for, like, 20 hours, you know, like a first-person shooter, they play it for, like, 20 hours. And then they complain and say, like, this is, like, the worst game ever. I want my money back. It's like, dude, go out in the real world and entertain yourself for 20 hours, almost an entire day, from dusk till dawn. You know, try doing that with 20 bucks. It's not going to happen. Or use that $20 and throughout the course of a week, entertain yourself for 20 hours. Yeah, is it gonna happen? Can you do it? No, there's no fucking way. It's impossible. You know, you got your money's worth. It's a great value. That's why I play video games because you can't beat the value, man. Like, like sixty dollars. Like this game's like ten bucks. I've played it for hours, fucking hours, you know. And I've had fun, and it kept me distracted, and it just made the day go by a little bit easier. You know, it did whatever. It entertained me. I sit back and watch TV, and I play this game, and I'm happy. And I got it for like 10 bucks. Like, amazing value. Like, if I went out to a bar to play, you know, poker, because a lot of, like, a lot of the bars out here, they have hold'em. You know, and you play for, like, a bar tab or something. You know... <clears throat> But, you know, like, if I went out to, like, you know, play some hold'em poker at a bar, you know, and entertain, entertain myself for the night, like, sometimes I do that, um, I'll probably spend, like, 30 bucks for, like, three hours. And that's what most people do, you know? Like, 30 bucks between, like, a couple beers, um, and, you know, a couple beers and... Maybe like an appetizer when I get there, and then I usually I'll have dinner there because like it's I usually go to like the sports bar. They have pretty good food there. Now I'll get like a buffalo chicken sandwich with some fries and whatever. And yeah, so at the end of the day, like 20, 20 30 bucks for like the entire night. You know, whereas I spent half that on this game, and yeah, I mean, that's that's how it works, man. You know, that's, that's I think that's really cool. That's just what I think, you know. But, like, what I am critical about is just just the lack of communication in a lot of these uh, game companies. You know, because, like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm glad they're, like, embracing social media. They're embracing Facebook and Twitter and all that. But at the same time, it's so misguided. Like, yeah, they're opening up and they're, and they're talking to us. But at the same time... I don't know, it's just, like, they're, they're just, they're still just giving, they're just feeding us more advertisements and stuff, you know? Like, I think, bon I, I think Vonderhaar, David Vonderhaar spoiled me because that guy was extremely open about everything, you know? It, it's, it, it's like everything that was going on in the studio, he, he, you know, you were like, you were, you were... You were tuned in on on that the entire process, and I thought that was really great. You know, and this just and, that, and maybe I, I just want to see that with everybody else. You know, and, and maybe I'm just putting you know these like it's, maybe I'm just putting dice and you know the battlefield guys in, in a different in, in that same light, and it's really not fair because that's really, that is not exactly you know their their de the development process. You know, maybe that's the problem, but. 
the thing I don't understand is why Dice has like they have a ton of community managers. They have an, I mean, they have a ton. You know, like I mean, they they have they have a community manager for the EA side for for Battlefield 3. And then they have like the head community manager Daniel Matros. They have Cson who I I think is like I don't know the North American lead community manager. They got like a Russian community manager, an Australian community manager. Uh, it, it's crazy, man. Like pretty much like the, the the most spoken languages have a community manager, you know. But but despite all of that. You know, despite all of that, um, I could tell you right now, today, like January 30th or whatever, that there's going to be a patch for Battlefield 3 coming out in like February, but you wouldn't know, nobody would know, unless you actually went out there and found it, you know? And that's the problem, it's just the we're, we're not really getting all this good information, you know, like... They are kind of receptive to our feedback, and, and that's great. But at the same time, it's like, you know, these guys are, are just out there selling. You know, they're, they're continually selling. It's the same thing Robert Bowling did. He was just out there. You know, Robert Bowling wasn't really a community manager. He was a fucking salesman, you know. He was a salesman for the DLC, basically. I mean, the guy came on Mishima, and, like, despite all the problems, the javelin glitches, the fucking people getting under the map and shit... You know, all the elevator bugs, um, boosting, everything, right? Everything. Not a single acknowledgement of what was going on. Except, he was just sitting there promoting his fucking map packs. And really just... And, and you know, I'm still feeling that scorn, you know? I'm still feeling that... that I, I'm still pissed off about that. So, when I see the same thing happening now, you know... It, it just drives me insane. It's like you got all these fucking people, but you can't, you know, you, you can't do anything constructive, you know, with all of these people, these resources, you know. The contests and stuff are great. It's great. I, I, I love it. But, but, you know, ah, it's just why. Daniel comes out and just says, hey, something great's about to happen soon. Or, or later, you know, I forgot what he said exactly. It was so vague. It's like there's some, there's gonna be some big changes later on. It's like when, you know, and we'll just get these this teaser information, this little these little morsels of information, and and that's fine. Okay, I understand. Like it, it's great you have to do that because you can't exactly leak, you know, the patch notes because they're not exactly set in stone, and then that's like Dice's mo, and you know. Which is great and all, but the thing is, like, throughout the entire beta, you know, like, throughout, like, waiting for the beta and all that, you know, you hear Daniel and all these guys you know, sit there and say, like, yeah, we can't set a date because we need to make sure the beta is perfect, you know, we need to make sure everything is polished. We need to, you know, like, the same thing with the game, like, we need to wait for it to be polished. We need to, like, do all this, 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 and that. And, like, I was hearing all this, and I'm like, oh, okay, good good, this game's gonna be polished, gonna be ready, it's gonna be amazing, you know, because they're, ah, hold on a second, because they're sitting there, you know, telling us, like, like, you know, no, we're not gonna rush it, no, no, we're not, we can't tell you anything, because we, we gotta have to make sure it's perfect, we gotta make sure everything works, 100%, right, 100%, it was always about that, 100%, 100%, gotta make sure it works perfect, gotta make sure it works perfect, well, in the end, it's not, it's, it's still garbage, like, there are a lot of fucking problems with this. And, you know, we, we sit there and we listen to that. And, and, and we let them, you know... I remember when, like, Daniel got pissed off and said, like... You know, like, uh... You guys are a bunch of spoiled brats. You know, you, you, you don't... We didn't have to make a beta. Blah, 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 blah. And... <laughs> so we're getting all this. And still we get an unfinished product. And we're still basically reliving Battlefield, uh, Battlefield Bad Company 2 all over again. And I just, uh, you know, just, uh, these game developers, they, they just don't take any time to, ah, uh, it sucks. And it's not exactly DICE's fault. Like, I understand, you know, it's, it's EA because they want their game out. They want it now because their shareholders want money. 
Like, it, and it just sucks, man. It really does. And that's why I'm just so sick of the industry, man. Because it's just a lot of this. You know, but it, the worst part is, is that the lack of communication, the lack of all this is because they can't tell us anything because we need to make it perfect. You know, I don't ever want to fucking hear that again until you put out a game that is perfect. Don't ever say that once. Don't ever say that again. Don't say it. You don't deserve it. You, you, you know, you guys as a company, and it might be you not. Know, it's, it's, it's clearly not your fault. But at the same time, you're not living up to the. I'm, I'm just so the frame rate doesn't get all choppy. You're not living up to the expectations that you've set by cooing us with this. You know, by saying it'll be ready when it's ready because it needs to be perfect. You know, that that that. that because it's not. That's what I'm saying. Because <laughs> you understand. You get what I mean. Uh, I don't know. That was like my biggest. That I just, you know, it was like the biggest thing I just wanted to talk about. It's just, it's, it's, it's so, it's just, it's annoying. Like it, it is so irritating. You know. Wow, that was perfect. Seventy-nine point three, maintaining it. But uh, I'm slowing down a little bit. I just had to jinx myself, right? <laughs> Damn it, these random, like, frame rate glitches kind of suck. It, it's because it's loading, like, new textures in the background, so it's going to slow it down a little bit. So when it does that, I kind of just look down. It's like, a, it's like a Warcraft trick. Because it has to render all the background and stuff, and, and that takes away, like, you know, and, and my video card is like, Oh, God! You know, it's like you threw another, like, stack of papers in front of it. It's like, Oh, God! So... <laughs> Oh, man. I didn't mean to get all ranty, but, like, I gotta get that stuff out. And I'm pretty sure, like, anyone that's watching this video, for, like, at this point, really actually just, you know, is interested in what I have to say and opinions and stuff like that. And probably would appreciate, you know, some some knowledge. And just open up a little bit more about me. Because, you know, I've been into gaming, like, my whole life, you know. Like, I... I... I think I started playing video games, like, you know, before even the Bit Wars, because, like, the first console I used to play was the Intellivision. I used to play q back in the day, you know, way back in the day, like, 19, uh, 1988, 1987, you know, and I didn't get a Nintendo until, uh, I think I was in the first or second grade, because, you know, back then, back then, having a Nintendo was... Th you know, when you were like five or six, that was a big deal. You know, those things were like two hundred dollars, and two hundred dollars in nineteen eighties money was a lot of fucking money, especially for a toy for a kid. Because you know, you have to remember, video games back then weren't huge. You know, they weren't really what they were. If you wanted to play video games, you had to go to the arcade. You know, and that's just how it was. So, you know. <clears throat> So, like, I think, and that's really when I got into it, when I start, first started playing Nintendo. And, like, the first game I got, not counting, of course, Mario Brothers and all that other crap, but the first game I actually seriously played, because I, mean, I used to play my grandma's Atari and stuff like that, you know. And that was fun and all, but, it, come on. These games were hard as shit, and I was really young. But, oh man, I'm losing speed, but it's perfect, because it's going to be 70 up ahead, so I don't have to touch anything. But, um... You know, like playing, playing combat, like on the on the crappy Atari AI and all that. I don't really count all that, but you know, like the very first game I got into was, uh, you know, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for the NES. You know, that old one that didn't really make any sense. That it had nothing to do with like them. It's just, it was just a game with like the like the Ninja Turtle characters, and that was about it. You know, and there were just like there were some some ties to actually it being Turtles, but back then I didn't really give a shit, because I was playing Ninja Turtles, bro. That's all that mattered, because, you know, when I was little, man, I had all the toys, bro. I had the Technodrome and the fucking, that little drill thing that Bebop Rocksteady would emerge out of the ground in. It's like that big drill. I forgot what it's called. I had, like, a bunch of foot soldiers. Like, uh, I traded, like, I traded, like, some of the, my, uh, you know, Turtles that I didn't, I didn't want for foot soldiers because I wanted like a little foot clan army so I can like you know fight them and stuff <laughs> because I, cause, like uh, I had all that other crap 
but um, yeah, you know. And I was never really a fanboy, like, growing up. Like, a lot of kids were, like, you know, like, really, really into, like, whatever system they had. And it never really... I didn't really care. I shouldn't say, like, we were really fanboys. It's just we had, like, a preference, you know? We wouldn't really make fun of each other for it because, you know, personally, I and, like, most of my peers, you know, like, my, my friends, we all, like, found it as an opportunity to try out the other systems, you know, try out the other games, you know, and stuff like that. So, like, I'd go over to my friend's house and I would play, um, you know, I'd play Pilot Wings on a Super Nintendo because I had a Sega Genesis. And that blew my mind, man. Pilot Wings back then was amazing. I mean, that was like 3D graphics, almost, right? It was kind of 3D. You know, it, it was kind of like, it was kind of 3D, kind of 2D. So, <clears throat> but, and it was a lot of fun, and it was challenging, but it was challenging in a good way, you know, it, it wasn't impossible hard or anything like that, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't, like, unreasonably hard, and there was, there, it was a good, fun, it was a good, clean, fun challenge, and I really liked that, I thought that was great, and I, I've always loved Pilot Wings, like, I can... I could pick up and play that game, like, any day of the week, you know. I'm probably going to be late, but I don't really give a shit. No, I think I should be good. I need to go to San Bernardino Approach, and then go to San Bernardino Stop. So I'm right up here, so I'm pretty good to go. But, uh, you know, and I, I, I played, like, the, uh, I had a Jaguar at one point. I had a 3DO. I used to work in a video game store in the flea market, you know, one of those used game stores. And so I had, like, access to, like, everything, you know. Like, I, I didn't have to, I didn't, I didn't have any wants when it came to video games, you know. Like, I, I would just play them. And that's what I did all day. I just played video games because I was friends with the, uh, the owner's son. And, you know, we'd just hang out all day. Because I used to, like, cause on the weekends I'd go to the flea market because I love, I love looking at junk. You know, I, I, I probably could, I should probably, if I was born in, like, a, in a rural state... I probably wouldn't have been a picker, because that just would have been a ton of fun, and I would have loved it, you know? But, you know, so I had access to all that stuff. Just around a curb. Come to a complete stop, opposite the platforms to complete the scenario. Okay. So, you know, anyway, guys, uh... You know, maybe next time I'll pick up where I left off. You know, just tell, you know, talk about my life a little bit, just uh, my experiences, some opinions and stuff. Might make this a regular series, maybe every Sunday, right? Chill. You know, I'll make my own kind of chill Sunday commentary. Be like chill, su chill Sunday train commentary or something. I don't know. I'm sure Blade won't really care. He probably won't even notice. That guy, that guy's huge. Well. Not re I'm not trying to, you know, you know what I mean. <laughs> a lot of you guys don't, because you might not watch only Easy Blade. I I watch a lot of commentators, to be honest with you. And one thing I will leave you with is uh, check out a guy named Chris Smoove, if you haven't already. He does uh, Call of Duty. And he was, like, my biggest inspiration for, like, my, you know, making commentaries and stuff like that. And also, like, you know, my... my uh, <clears throat> my live commentaries because he made it you know he makes it a lot he makes it a lot of fun to watch you know, I think live commentaries are like the best you know they're they're so much fun to watch but uh, anyway guys that's it for now I'm gonna go ahead and park this thing stick my head out, out the door like I'm out the window like I'm a uh, like I'm a dog and let's see here just gotta Make sure I get this right. Just gonna pull this bad boy in. Uh, man, I got there early. Well, pretty early at least. I was at the platform. That's good enough. Oh. Looks like I went too far. That's fine. Let's throw this baby in reverse. Oh, I'm late. Oh well, who cares, right? No, you know what the hell with it. I'll just leave it here. Cut the engine. 
Who's keeping score? <sighs> the line is clear. The train will pull in the platform area. Well done. All right, guys, that's it for now. I had a lot of fun. Hope you did, too. I'm going to go ahead and render this up and uh, put it up on the YouTubes, and I'll catch y'all later. Um, should have another Battlefield video up soon, so yeah, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Peace, guys. Oh, you probably want to see my score, don't you? So let me go ahead and throw that in there. Oh, shit. Speeding, 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 speeding. <laughs> speeding, 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 speeding. Speeding early. Speeding, 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 speeding. Eh, I still got points. <laughs> What's my ranking? Non-existent. Who cares? Okay, well, alright, that's it for now, guys. Catch y'all later.